Hello friends, today I am going to talk about c -sharp generic. It's something like a magic band. Imagine I am a bartender who has to serve drinks to all kind of customers. Some like beer, some like whiskey and some like fruity cocktails. Instead of having a separate recipe book for each type of drink, would it be great to have a single recipe book that can handle all kinds of drinks? That's what c -sharp generics are like. So before we get ourselves indulged into it, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. c sharp generics. What are c sharp generics? c sharp generics like a magic band that can be used to create flexible and reusable code. They allow us to write function and classes that can work with different types of data without sacrificing type safety or performance. It's available in system.collection.generic namespace. Okay, let's try to understand with the help of examples shown over here. So here, without generics, we need to write something overload method to complete the same functionality what we are trying to achieve with the generics. So let's understand first this example without generic. So here what I have done, I have written two print data method. One print data method is going to accept input parameter of the int category. Okay, and this second print data method is going to receive input parameter as a, a string data type. So what these two methods are doing, they are doing the same thing. What they are doing, they are just printing this statement into this console window. Data received in parameter and this sum data is nothing but the input value that we are receiving as the in data type. We are taking that value and printing along with this text into the console window. Similar thing we are doing from here. Here we are getting the sum data of the string category. So we are printing these statement into this console window. Okay. Here we have written overloaded method. So same method with different parameters data type, right? Now if you see this print data five, what I'm trying to do over here, I'm invoking this print data method. And here I'm passing five as a value. So which method is going to get invoked? It will be decided what value we are passing into this method while calling this, right? So in that case, in the statement, the first method is going to get invoked because here this print data method is going to accept this int data category input parameter. So 5 is nothing but of the int category. So this method is going to get invoked. So data received in parameter and 5, it is going to get printed into this console window. If you see the next statement, print data India. So here what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to call this print data, but here I'm passing argument value as India. This method is going to get invoked and this statement is going to get printed into this console window. Data received in parameter and here I am passing India. So India is going to get printed over here. So this is the way how we are going to achieve the same functionality without generic. So instead of having a separate method for each type of data type, wouldn't it be great to have a single method that can handle all kind of data type? That's where generics comes into the picture. If you see these examples with generics, here I have written one generic method. If you see the syntax, the syntax is almost same. Only difference is we are adding this opening and closing angular bracket and in between I'm writing T and instead of data type, I'm writing T. So T is just a notation of generic that this data type is going to get applied at the runtime based on the input value that we are passing while calling this method. Okay, if you see this print data 5, so here what I'm trying to do, I'm just going to invoke this print data and here I'm passing 5. So T is going to get replaced with the int data type and some data will be having as a 5 value. Okay, so this statement is going to print data received in parameter and the 5 value. If you are going to invoke print data India, so this T is going to replace with the string data type at the runtime. So this statement is going to get printed data received in parameter India. Okay, let's see all these things in action in Visual Studio. So here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the C sub generics. That what I have done, I have created one console application generics demo in C sharp that has program.cs file. So before writing a C sub generics program, we need to import this namespace system.collection.generic because this namespace is having generic class. Okay. First of all, we need to import this. Okay, so there is a namespace generic demo in c -sharp that has class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. So here I am just printing c -sharp generic demo into console window via this statement console.writeline c -sharp generics demo. Okay, now I'm just calling this print data India. So print data is nothing but a static method under this class itself. 
so this is nothing but the static method print data so i have written two print data so basically i have written two overloaded methods here if you see this first print data method this method is going to accept of in data type input parameter this print data is going to accept a string input parameter so basically i have written two print data method to handle different data type okay so for that this is the print data india here i am passing this argument of a string data type so ideally this print data is going to get invoked this print data where this string data type is going to accept input parameter okay so it will be decided based on what value we are passing if you are passing india india is of a string data type so this method is going to get invoked okay and here in the next statement i am calling print data here i am passing pi value pi value to it so basically i am passing argument of in data type while calling this print data method so this print data method is going to get invoked where in data type input parameter is expected so let me execute this program and show this output to you okay so control came over here print data india so let me go and use a step into okay once i calling this step into if you see this print data is going to get invoked you see here some data is having value of india okay so this statement is going to get printed let me go and execute this now the control came over here again so this statement got executed now print data is going to get invoked where i'm passing five value to it right so this time it is going to invoke this print data where this int data type is expected and if you see this sum data right now we have got the value as a five over here. so now i'm just going to execute this so it, this statement got executed right and then console dot read line so if you see this output we got c sub generic demo data received in parameter india data received in parameter 5 so both statement got printed from different print data method the first got printed where a string data type as an input parameter was expected and second where in data type is expected so from these two statement got printed from different method altogether right now let me stop this now what i'm trying to do over here is i'm going to comment these two overloaded method okay and then i'm just going to uncomment this generic method that i have already written and kept it over here so if you see this generic method i have used this angular bracket t angular bracket and here t is going to get replaced with the data type based on the data that we are passing while calling this print data method okay so this is the way how we are going to write this generic method so this generic method is going to handle different data type in our case we are going to pass this india and five one is of the string data type as an argument and the second one is the in data type argument right so we are going to get the same output but this only one method is going to handle both the requests okay let me execute this and show this output to you i'm just going to put the print breakpoint over here okay we go and execute this okay so control came over here okay so now let me go and step into this print data method if you see this sum data it it is having the value of india okay so let me go and execute this statement so this statement would have printed into console window now i'm just going to call this print data 5 where i'm just passing argument of in data type as a 5 value to it right let me go and execute it again if you see here some data it is having five value to it this method is going to handle in data type request also okay so this statement is going to get printed now let me go and click continue button so if you see this output output got appear into this console window c sub generic demo data received in parameter india data received in parameter five so same output we got it this time i have used this generic method instead of overload method right now let's see the c sub generic demo number two here what i'm trying to do over here is let's suppose we have a program that needs to store a list of numbers or a list of strings without generics we might have to write separate code for each type of the number we want to store such as in float double or strings with generics we can write a single block of code that works for any type of number or string okay let's see here i have used list of type t generic collection 
and here what I'm trying to do over here is I'm just going to instantiate of this list of collection I'm adding the value 1 2 3 to it so basically I am creating a list of numbers that's what I have written numbers dot add 1 numbers dot add 2 numbers dot add 3 and what next I'm doing I'm just retrieving one by one number and printing into this console window and that's what I have written this for each loop now if you see this create a list of a string I have used the same list of type t generic collection to create a list of a strings that's what I have written list of a string imp names is equal to new list string and here I am adding the value to it Ravi Akanksha and Rahul to it and then I am just retrieving the value from this collection list of a string collection printing into this console window right okay let me execute this program and show this output to you now output got appeared into this console window and if you see c sub generic demo number 2 got printed number in the list 1 2 3 got printed name in the list Ravi Akanksha Rahul got printed in this examples we have used list of type t generic collection class it represents a placeholder for a data type we can then create instance of list of end and list of a string to store the different types of data right and that's what we have done and that's what we are able to retrieve the data from that particular list of a strings and list of numbers right so by using generics we can write code that are more flexible efficient and easier to maintain we can write a single block of code that can be used for many different type of data which saves us time and effort why generics in c sharp C sub generics have several benefits and are widely used in the modern C sub programming language. Here I have given some of the main reasons to use generics. Number one, reusability. With C sub generics, we can write code that can be reused with different types, which saves our time and efforts. This is particularly useful when we are writing libraries or frameworks that need to work with a wide variety of data types. Number two, type safety. It ensures type safety by allowing us to specify the type of data that our code will work with at compile time. This reduces the risk of the runtime errors and makes our code more reliable. Number three, performance. It can often be more efficient than non-generic code as they eliminate the need of the typecasting and boxing unboxing operations. Number four, clarity and readability. It can make our code more clear and readable by providing a concise and consistent way to look with different types of data types. Number five, scalability. It can help make our code more scalable by allowing us to work with large data set and avoid memory issue that can occur with non-generic code. So these are some of the main reasons why we go for the generics in C-sharp. Disadvantages of C-sharp generics. While C sub generics offers many advantages, there are some also potential disadvantages to be aware of. Number one, increased complexity. Generics can increase the complexity of our code, especially if you are not familiar with them. This can make our code harder to read, understand, and maintain, especially for developers who are new to generics. Number two, type constraints. When using C sub generics, we need to specify constraints on the types that can be used with our code. This can be limiting in some cases and may require us to write additional code to handle these cases. Number three, compilation time. Generics can increase compilation time, especially if you are working with the complex data types. This can slow down your development process and make it more difficult to debug the issue. Number four, code blot. Generics can result in large code files which can make our application larger and slower to load. This can be particularly problematic for mobile application or other platform with limited resources. Number five, debugging. Debugging can be more challenging with generic code because we may have to deal with multiple types at once. This can make it harder to identify issues and can slow down the debugging process. Overall, C sub generics are a powerful and flexible tool that can be used in a wide range of scenarios. By allowing us to write code that works with different types of data, generics can help us write more efficient, reusable and maintainable code. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.